Here is an example of what we're going to be making. We're going to be making an admin page that allows us to add a user into the database, give them a role, and give them a claim, and allow us to authorize that user according to the role or claim to you know whatever it is in our pages. This information will help you with further projects because you'll understand the process and how to implement them in Blazor. Welcome back, lady and gentlemen. Today, we're going to be going over roles, policies, and claims in a Blazor server project. Now, in my last video about authentication and authorization, in there, we went through how to just make the most bare basic uh, project we can with those things. But in this case, we're going to go one step further and apply these policies, claims, and roles in our project. Once you know how to do it here, you can do it anywhere, basically, and the concepts don't really change between Blazor server projects. When it comes to Blazor WebAssembly, it might be a little different, but in this case, once you have this figured out, you, you already know how to do it for any Blazor server project you might want. So let's get started. As promised, we're going to be starting from scratch, but I will be skipping the first portions of it. Basically, I'm going to go through all the way to the migration step. We're going to do the migration real quick, and then we'll start digging into all the roles, policies, and claims. You don't know what I'm talking about. That's fine. I went over this in my other video. Uh, I think I had some timestamps somewhere. So laser, uh, you know, claim, role, roles, policy video. You know, please, claims, roles, policy. Perfect. And yes, here we're going to be using in, in, uh, individual accounts as our authentication type. Starting off real simple. I'm going to create that. How you been, guys? Anything new? Anything new in the world? Interests you? I'll be here. All right, perfect. So first things first. We are needing to go to the app settings JSON. We're gonna to need to change this to match our database. So yeah, it gives us like a like a pre-generated thing here. We don't need this. We need an actual database. So if I didn't mention before, you're gonna need SQL. This is just my old project. But we're just gonna be creating a new database from here. So oops. New database. Role policy and coin. Uh, there you go. Blazor auth RPC. Fine. So, in case you don't know what to do at this step, you're going to need to uh, fill in two pieces of information specifically the server that you're going to use and the database name you're going to use. So, I don't need this name here. I want to give it the name that I just wrote here. Is this one? Is it auth RPC? And then we're gonna to need to put in that server name here. Here, connect object explorer, get the server name from there. And you move this. You move it in there. So now yeah. That's fine. All right, so we have our app settings.json already connected. You need this uh, first and foremost, we're gonna be running this in order for it to show up here. When we finally do the migration pieces and you'll see what I'm talking about if you do not know. But before even doing that, I wanna do something real quick before uh, I forget to do this step. We're gonna go over the program.cs file. We're gonna need to do some changes here. So in this case, I want you to Uh, I would like you to give me a second. Okay. What I would like you to do is add this line to the add default identity. So this was created for you. And just above this, add this line here. Identity roles will allow us to use roles um, within our project. If you didn't add that, it's gonna, when we start using roles, it's gonna give you an error. And there's gonna be more stuff coming in as well, but we'll, we'll get to it once uh, we get to it. I just wanna add that little piece because that's really easy to forget. So yeah, next string is fine. I think everything else here is okay. Yeah, there's nothing really here that I need to change right now. So we'll just save what I'm talking about for later. Don't worry. Don't worry about it. 
the next step that we need to do is actually run the project. And the reason why we're going to run is because I would like to very quickly have a user already inside the project and make sure that um, we do the whole migration step that the, all the models that we need to create are created within the database. So if you don't know what I'm talking about. Talking about implementing all of these tables into our database. So we just so the easiest way to do that to just uh, register or log in or whatever. Login might be easier. And you write your password here. Login. I actually give you an error, and then within the error is going to ask you to do something called apply migrations. You want to do this. What's going to happen is it's going to apply the models that were in here into our table, into our, our database, my bad. That's what you want to do. And if you want to check to make sure that those were added, go here, go to tables. And now we have new tables that we didn't add before. I didn't add these beforehand. You saw me make the database here. So these are new tables. And that's exactly what we want. So in this case, I think we're good to go. We don't really need to do anything right now when it comes to this. And if you want more information on what exactly is happening here, I made two videos going over uh, the EF stuff, the entity framework stuff. And I made another video going over the actual authorization and authentication, the simplest thing. So we're just going to be moving forward, trying to implement the roles here. In order to do that, I thought that the best way is to give you a practical example of how to use them, which is, let's say, creating an admin page. That's exactly what I'm planning on doing. Uh, we're going to add a new um, Razor component. Yeah, there. And we're going to call this Razor component admin page. And up here, you're going to be able to navigate to it. Oops. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, new keyboard. Still getting used to it. Just have that in there for now. We're going to go to the nav menu here. We're going to add that here. So we are just adding a new page to the nav menu, a new link to the nav menu. Is there's no authorization or authentication pieces just yet. We're just setting up everything that uh, that I want in order to show you how things work easily, uh, or at least easy enough. So in this case, the idea is that we're going to be creating a new uh, way of adding users to databases here. So right now, this is what a user is, and this is where the user table goes, uh, the user table, period. So whenever you add a user, they get added here. And whenever we have a role, they get added here. Now, when it comes to roles, we actually have to add these roles uh, separately, but we need to have the roles already set up beforehand. However, I'm not going to get ahead of myself. We're just going to work on the page. I'm just letting you know that there's going to be some steps in the database you're going to need to do um, before this whole thing completes. But for the meantime, we're just going to work on creating our little uh, menu here. So in order to do that, I want to create two objects, or at least two, um, two classes to represent our users and our roles. It's because uh, we're going to be, uh, we're going to be using the database, but only need to put in information, we're not going to be extracting information. I think it's much easier this way. So in order to do that, I am going to need to do create two classes. One class is going to be for the user and one class is going to be for the role in order for us to add them into those database uh, tables that you saw there. So let's do that. Just adding a new class in there. Just a normal class within the data folder. In case you don't see it. I'm not blocking. Perfect. All right. So this is going to be the user class. And then we're going to add just another one in there. 
and call this the role class. Yeah, just roll. All right, perfect. So what does our user need? Our user requires a, uh, a login name or username, basically. So in my case, I just want to make uh, everything very, very simple. So I only really care about two things with a user. That is the user's login name or their email. It's going to be an email. It has to be an email. And um, their role. So I'm going to add that those pieces here. And the reason why I keep staring away is because I have this project already created. I'm just going to copy paste these pieces here. Oh, we'll fix that now. So I have an email annotate, uh, email data annotation there. And it's required because we're going to be creating a form. Yes, we're going to be creating a little form that's uh, going to act as our, our manager, how we're going to interact with our database and how we're going to put users in there. Sure, you could register your user using the register that it gives you, but we could do it here as well. And this will also teach you how to do it yourself in case you want to go outside of using the uh, tools that are provided for you. This is still using um, the identity framework, so using identity framework. So you're not going to get away from that, but you will at least maybe get away from uh, the, the default things that, that the project brings you. Sometimes they're usable, sometimes they're not, depending on you. So now that we have those, this one set up, I need the role set up as well. And the role is also just as simple. Role name and ID. All right, I should do that. So here is where we're going to have some fun. I'm going to give you a giant thing that you need to look at before I start writing all the uh, like HTML stuff and all the Blazor components. There are things that we need to bring into this. It is. <clears throat> so we have a lot of libraries coming in here. Oh, and this is actually not called that. It's called names, rules, policy, whatever. So here we're bringing, you know, the identity stuff. Some logging stuff. I don't think we need this, but well, I'll see. Get rid of it. We have some claim stuff because we're gonna be working with claims later on. We need a user manager and a sign manager. So the way that and I, the identity framework works, if, if you go here, if I go here. Here we go. Is that it brings you already some um some classes already prepared for you that has a lot of functions in there. Services? Well, either way, you have some managers. That's what they call them. They call them managers that are prepared for you in order for you to um, interact with the database or interact with um, the database that is prepared for you. So you have some common things already good to go. And we're going to be using some of them in order to apply our roles and claims and stuff specifically in this user manager, we're gonna apply the um, add to role and add claim stuff to our users. And I'll be talking more about roles and claims probably a little later. However, just know that these managers contain the actual functions that we need. So in case you have a mystery as to how we're exactly creating all these things, because it's already been brought in for us through the identity, uh, uh, the identity framework. Also, I need this as well, the JS runtime in order for me to get the alerts out because I want alerts in order to know whether something has been uh, successful or not, because we're not gonna be able to see it as the page will not refresh when you do this, these things, that's Blazor for you. So what do we need now? Now let us work on the actual uh, edit form. And the sign-in manager is used to create the user, by the way. It has its it has other functions and stuff, but uh, we're probably not going to be using it. But yeah, I'm just copying this from uh, the window here. But yeah, we're going to need a form. We're going to have a model. We're going to call a new user, 
and we're going to have a, a function that we're going to create within this code right here. I'm going to put it all here in order for it to be easier to see uh, as we go along. So I'm not going to do the whole code behind thing. Some of these in there. Ready to go. So now we need our model and we need our we need this function. The model is going to be a new user model. Here. To. Prefer the old way of doing this. It's just a force of habit I've been doing for so many years. Okay. I'll also turn around a lot because uh, I know that my picture down here is pretty big. So I don't want to just block the code. Like I, I realize in some of the videos I do that. And I'm sorry about it. But yeah. Also, we don't really need to do anything here just yet. So we're just going to stick around for a little bit. We have a new user. Uh, we have a new user for the model of the edit forms. This is a new user object. We need a role list because we're going to be creating a list. Normally what happens whenever you want to do like an admin page, you want to grab the roles from the database. We're not going to be doing that here. We're just going to be creating like a list of of role types this is why I created the that role class in there. So we're gonna be making a list of these, and we're gonna be bringing that into this in order to choose the role we want, and then apply that to that user and create them, and then add them to the database. That's basically all you're doing. You're adding a role, you're adding a claim to that one user, and it goes through, add it to the database, and you're good to go. But in order to do that, you have to do it all in the uninitialized async. Even though we're not using um, an asynchronous, like we, we don't need to use the uninitialized async in this component because it's not going to be uh, an asynchronous call. But when you do do this by grabbing it from the database, it, you will have to use the initial uninitialized async. And I didn't see any issues with it working with my uh, synchronous, uh, working with just the list I'm about to create. So within this uh, lifecycle method, we're going to add a roles list. Within the roles list, we're going to add the roles. Obviously, admin, HR, manager, and user. And then we're going to have an ID for each one. One, two, three, four. The reason why I chose this is because it kind of sort of matches what the roles look like uh, here. It's just a name and an ID. If I went here, it's just uh, it's two n bar chars, which is they're basically strings. All right. So let's just not overcomplicate it. And in order for us to add the roles, uh, we could add them manually, but I'm not going to do that. We're going to do it the programmatic way, the way that you probably add them if you had to dig them up from a database and ensure that you have all the roles you need, not worrying about whether or not they were changed. So in order for that to work, I have a for each loop that goes to that list. And then it gets added uh, in the list as a select list. So what's happening here is that I created uh, two steps. The first step is I created a role object itself, but what's actually going to be added to the drop down list that I'm planning on creating is called a select list item. That's how uh, typically whenever you see a drop down list, you want to kind of convert it into a select list item. This isn't Jake. This isn't JavaScript. A select list item is a Microsoft class that allows you to essentially work with the drop down component a little bit better. Um, because it only reduces the values to text value and selected. There's other stuff in here, I believe as well, but these are the ones I only care about. And yeah, so I'm just doing it. The first one is selected true. And if it's any other one, then it's going to be false. And that should make sure that the selected list item appears in the, uh, the drop down box, but I've had issues with it in the past with blazer specifically. So we'll see. But that's really all we need to do. This is all the, uh, the for the first step of actually adding the roles. Should be perfect. Oh yeah, let, let us add these, this function for now. Ooh. 
and add, add user function to avoid. And within there, actually it's gonna be a public async void because we are gonna pass in data from here into the database. So it has to be an asynchronous call. And we're gonna be using the edit context in order to grab the data that's in there. So right now, I don't think I need anything else for the moment. I think that should, yep, there we go. So that should take care of all the errors and we have our roles list already good to go here. Our user model is instantiated here. And now we get to work on the edit form. So on the edit form, I wanna just have uh, two, three things there actually. We're gonna have a drop down. we're gonna have Two drop downs. No, no. We're gonna have one drop down. That's gonna be for the roles. We're gonna have one input select uh, input text, so you can write the email, and then we're gonna have uh, a button to submit it all. So in order to do that, I'm gonna have uh, two form groups for the the two major components, and then the one button is gonna be on on its own. So you could make you could be all fancy and just copy me what I'm doing here. Well, you don't really have to do any of this. I just have it so that, you know, this looks a little nicer. I have a label for it called add user. And then I have an input text here, which gets the login name from this uh, value here. If you don't know how edit forms work, I think I made a video about it. Uh, you should go check it out. You know what I mean? Just, you know, after this. So this is an input text. I got the ID to match the label. We have the name. So this is good to go. Next thing I want is the input select. So the input select is going to have our roles here. So again, copy, don't copy, don't matter. You want to be fancy with it. If not, it's just going to look ugly. This isn't going to look that pretty either, but who cares? I certainly don't. Input select. I have an ID here to match the ID. That should go here. Or do I? I don't think I do. I don't think I really need it. But anyways, we have a bind value, new user, user role. Of course, I have to have IDs. And in there, you do a for each through your, your list, basically. And the value of the list is going to be whatever the value is. So our value is our ID. And we have a text um, that's going to be what you see. So. That's why I paired up each and any one of these roles with an ID. You have to kind of do that here as well. You need a name for the role and then the ID for it. In order for you to do the relationship uh, that you need to do in the database for it to match in the right places. Uh, to match your user specifically. And then finally, we're going to add our button. So here we go. We have our button here. So what this does is once uh, you know, you click save, you activate that, and you submit whatever the information is in here. So, what we're gonna do with this information is we're gonna convert it into the user model because that's what it is. We're we're making we're passing in this edit form as a user model, and I believe we're only taking the value from it, but. There's gonna be some more stuff we're gonna have to do here in a second. But for now, I just wanna make sure that the form works. So, you know, yeah. So, if in case you don't know how to uh, convert something um, as basically a generic into an actual val into an actual um, object that has the parameters is how you do it. There's one way of doing it. And all I want to do is run this and check the progress so far. So I should have a page that says admin page that allows me to add users, but obviously we don't have any of the functionalities in there. So I just want to make sure that it at least runs and that when I click submit with information, it passes information up to this point. So I'm just gonna put a breakpoint there. 
right here. So there you go. Oh, there's no need for us to log in. I don't have anything there. Oh, that's right. I didn't put this on there. And I didn't put the label either. The things you miss when you copy paste. There. I missed that form group div thing and I missed the label for this. But don't worry, I'm just gonna hot reload. And there you go. Ta da! Hot reloading is really great. I like it. So, what happens if I were to do this? Oh. It needs to be a valid email address. The reason why I have that is because I have the validation summary in there so that I make sure I don't write, you know, bad stuff and make sure that it's an email format. And as you can see, we have access to the admin HR manager. So unfortunately, this, the selected thing doesn't work very well here. I have to dig into that more, but we have our roles here. What happens if I save? You're going to have your contacts here. And your user model, I did this, is you're going to see that I have my login name and the user role's value. So the value that got passed in here was not the name, was the ID, which is fine. So that means that our, our form is working. We have created the correct form. It is going through and it's passing data that I expect to be passing it. So it's all gravy right now. So the next thing that we have to do in order to uh, continue um, making sure this is correct is actually we're gonna add those roles into our role database. So real quickly, I'm just taking out the, the, the stuff I did before. So I just have it here. But in order for you to have your roles working, you have to have in the ASP.NET role table roles for it to um, actually uh, consider because if you don't have it, then the user manager add to roles thing is not going to work. So you're going to need to add those roles that I have here, which are the same values going to be one, two, three, four, like I had over there into this so one two three four id we're going to do that you do it through this insert into this table and we're going to add some values in there you need to fulfill these values so you want your id to be one it's an n bar chart so these have to be a string admin and then uh, when it says normalized name, I just put capitalized versions of the name that all it is, is that each name is the same capital case, basically, or it's capital or case, whatever it is that they're so you can just make the uh, any conversions you need to do later easier for you. Or any comparisons, actually. So. For these. And then we just do this three, four, and then I had HR as number two. Keep them the same. Don't uh, make sure that whatever you have in the list is what you have here. And finally, the user. Now that we have that in there, we have our roles ready to go. So for the next step that's going to come after that 
is the actual implementation of this add user with role, which means that here we're going to add, we're going to be doing a lot of things simultaneously. Normally you would do this in different, um, in different steps. So I'm just going to be combining a bunch of steps here, which is we're going to be creating a user. So any user that we add into it through our form is going to be added. Um, I don't think it matters if they exist or not in the database. I have not actually tried that. I think there is some sort of identity thing that tells you that you can't add the same email or something, but I don't really care about any of that right now. So what we want is to submit a user, give them a role and give them a claim as well. So we're just gonna do all those steps in this one little function and it's gonna be real messy, but you're gonna get, you're gonna understand how to do all this in identity framework. Our user is equal to new identity user. And then for this step, I'll actually go through it uh, typing. And we're going to have the username. So the username is part of the user table right here. So we want this username to be obviously what the user model is. Right. We're going to have an, we need to give him an email. It's actually going to be the uh, same thing because our username and login name are going to be the same for this application. And then, uh, what else do I need here? Oh yeah. In order to avoid issues with the email confirm stuff, because if it's not confirmed, then it's just going to lock you out. You could do it this way, or you could change the program.cs stuff here. that says sign in required confirmed account or something. You could just set that to false. I believe that will do the same thing, but I like having that on. I'm just, I'm used to just having it that on. To be honest, it's more out of a sense of nostalgia than anything else. And I'd rather just do this. So now we're just gonna fill in those. That should be enough for the user. I think everything else is a nullable thing. So you don't have to worry about that. And in the meantime, I would also like to make sure that we have a message that pops up that says whether or not we were successful in our, you know, in submitting this user. So we're just going to have a message prompt ready to go when that happens. We're going to do all that in here. And now to actually create your user, this is what you want to use. The user manager that's up here, up here, user and manager object. Is gonna we're using one of the uh, the functions that it has create async. So we're gonna pass in a user, and this allows us to create a user and a user with a password. Now, because of the default pages that are set up there, you need a password to log in. It's best to just give it a password. So I'm just gonna use this the same password I've been using in every single one. Password one two three with an expansion point, just to avoid any problems. And you know, obviously, you would have you know, like a password thing here that tells you user and then the password and the role or something. But in this case, we're just going to be as simple as possible. All we really care about is the actual um, assigning of the roles, the claims and stuff, and how to actually like generate them and stuff, you know, just how to use it. You want to get fancy with it, you can in more complicated projects. But this is just to assign the policies and stuff. So if the result has succeeded, that means that we've added the user successfully into our database. And also this is a async, by the way. And when that happens, I would like my message to change to message user was added. Now we haven't actually gone to the message portion yet. I'm going to get to it now. This will be the next thing. I know there's a lot happening here, but I'll go over it. Don't worry. And also, this is not correct. Yeah.
So let's go over what's happening here. Let's see if we can see that. Just barely, but yeah. So here we're actually gonna add the roles. Uh we're gonna get a role instead from this list. We want the role that we assign to it. So we don't know exactly what role was given to was given to this person at at this time unless we go through, you know, uh matching the value of the ID that went through the user model and then matching it with whatever is in this list. So you do something similar either here or if you're in a web assembly, you do it in the server somewhere like this kind of um, relationship. Essentially, like you're, you'll be checking for the roles and make sure that that role that was added is in the list. And then whatever was in the list, that's going to be the role that you take from it. And then that information is going to be what you pass into the database. And that's this piece here. So what's happening here is now we are going to add the role to the user that the identity framework knows to do the or yeah, identity framework knows to do the um the relationship to the user. So here we have our user and we have the role that we just got from here. So we get the role, we match to the ID that we sent back up here. And then from there, we pass in the role name because we have both the role ID and the role name, but we want to add the role name here in this case. Uh, and if there's no role name, it's, you add it as a user just for safety. So you have your user object and you have the role name here. So now it knows to add the, uh, the right role to it. So yeah, you see here, we have to use the name in this case. Went to here. Oh, this is the, the one I made before, but there's not, don't worry, there's nothing here for you guys. This is my old one. Actually, I'm going to get rid of that so you don't get confused. Oh, so we have both an ID and a role ID. Um, for the ASP.NET user roles, and I believe it's going to be adding that into there because it's not going to add it to the roles table because your roles table is separate. You're going to add it to the table that is connecting both the users and the roles. So it's going to be adding there. But you'll see when this happens. So all we're doing is connecting both the role and the user. And if that's succeeded, I want to add this to the message. So oh, yeah, we're going to have a message prompt that's going to be basically adding stuff like user was added, role was added, then we're going to add a claims after that. But I think for now we're good with, with me showing off what the roles are. And I'm just going to add this. You can do it yourself if you want. This just tells you, um, this gives you the alert that you have available to you that uses the uh, JS interrupts. Maybe video about that too. But this is how you activate an alert with uh, something that's in Java in a JavaScript library. So all we're gonna do is add a user. It's gonna add a role. We haven't added a claim yet, but this user definitely has a role in here. So let's just try this out and see if that works. Remember, this is the password. Here. All right, so test two at test.com and make him an admin sure. User was added, role was added. So we were successful in adding our user to the table. You see something here, yeah, we have our user ID. The user ID is a GUID and the role ID is one. Admin was, was one in this case. If we go to our users uh, table here, we see that our guy is existing here. And, uh, and the roles claims that's not going to change. Anything here? Oh. Oh, 
Okay, perfect. So now that is complete. So let's let's actually go into the authorization of how to implement our roles and policies and stuff like that. So in this case, I haven't implemented a policy yet. I'm just going to go over how to do the rules real fast. The rule is probably the easiest one of them all. So in order for me to do this, let's create a page. And call the admin, call the, call, just call the role page. Probably going to be changing this a little later. And in this page, we're just going to use it so that whatever role I decide to authorize against it is going to be the role that, um, like in this case, going to be added. This is how you uh, secure a page so that you only allow a certain role to get in. So in this case, I only want the admin role or admin roles to get in here. So you have multiple roles in this place, but we're just going to use one. And then we're going to do the same to the nav menu. So if you want to do something on the actual page itself that you want to lock them out, you have to go through something called the authorize, uh, the authorize view. So that's a, just a component. So within this component, we could actually assign either roles or policies. So in this case, I'm going to give it a role as a parameter. And this role is going to be admin. Role admin only page. That's fine. And uh, I didn't give this a, I didn't give it a page route. So let me add that in there. Uh, role page. Not very creative, but it will do. What's wrong with you? Oh, yeah. Also, my batteries ran out. So I'm going to switch it out real quick. Sorry about that, guys. The camera died. But where were we? We were here at the role page. We're just adding the uh, the role page URI that I could add it here in our nav menu. I'm gonna get rid of this real quick. All right, now we're just checking to make sure that uh, that one had the, the role. So we have everything set up. The role page should be connected to that other page. And we should not be able to see it unless we are an admin. We're not. We're not authenticated yet. So we don't have that page available to us. The page was called uh, something long. Uh, role admin only page. We don't see it here. So let's us log in as this user. So our password is the same for all users. So what this tells us is that both the login process that we created and the um and the role that we have are being accepted by the identity framework. Now I'm not sure why it's doing that. Maybe I did something here. Of just copy paste, he might have did something. Uh, nah, I don't know. Maybe because this wave is very, very long. Anyways, you can see the uh, we are a role of admin right now, according to the database. And we can see this, which is authorized to only admin roles. And we could get to the role page. So I'm just going to copy this real quick. I'm going to log out. If I try to go to role page logged out. I'm not authorized. That means that our roles are, are working as they should be. And that is how you implement roles as an authorization and how you give someone a role through uh, like something like this, through these methods here.
So everything else was just to give context to what we're doing so that we could just keep doing this over and over again all we want and keep testing them out. So the next thing I would like to do is do the policy thing. So a policy is basically a, a much stronger version of a role. It does the same thing, except that you could have roles as part of your policy and also have logic in them. So you don't have to um, go crazy. Because, you know, I think I explained that only having roles is kind of a limiter to how we um, separate our code. So if you want to have like, you know, only people who are over 18 or whatever, go to a, a site based off some information from your claims. Or if you are, or, you know, what have you, then you're going to have a problem. So in this case, I'm going to add an authorization. Uh, this is, this is um, a policy that has two policies, admin policy for the admin and HR policy for HR. So I know this is very simple. It looks like it's really redundant, but what this is now looking for are claims of both admin and HR for these policies to, uh, if we decide to use these policies in our code, it's going to look for our person to have a claim of admin. So right now, I don't think, yeah, we don't have a claim available to us. No, we are, we do have a role that's connected to us, but we do not have any claims whatsoever. So that's going to be our next step. So I'm going to test out the policy stuff when we make the claims, but trust me when I say this, that like, if I wanted to do something like this and, uh, you know, add more stuff to this, I can. So I'm not limited to just doing this. I'm just doing this here because it's much easier, but we could have as many claims as we want. And if uh, we ever want to change how our authorization piece works by changing the policy itself, we have only one place to change it here, where if you want to change the role, you have all the roles to go through to change it on your program. So that makes it also a lot more easier to manage as well. Just doing something like this in order to take care of like the role stuff is probably best. And I think it's good practice. But before we could do that, we need to have, give our our users a claim, which I will do now. But don't worry, you'll see the policy in action once we put the claim in. And to do the claim stuff, we're gonna do it down here. So whenever a person gets a role or whatever, we're also gonna give them a claim, match that as well. In order to do the claim, you just add claim, get the user, but now you have to create an actual claim object. So claim objects are, are, are two values. You can set, you can make, give your claims as many values as you want, but the default values that our claim gets are going to be these two. So yeah, you could, these are all the, um, all the functions for the claims. So we're just going to be using the first one, the type and the value. And you do a lot more with this, or you can give people multiple claims if you want as well. But I'm just going to stick with the role name as the, uh, as the type. And then the ID is going to be the value itself. Yeah. So our roles are connected to IDs. IDs are the actual value of those roles. And the names are just a way that we keep track of everything for our own selves, for our own sanity. So what this is going to do, just add the same, uh, the role is going to be whatever the role is going to be named. And that will be the claim itself as well. Because right now, my guy doesn't have any of these claims running. So actually, I will test that out. Let's make another authorize you. But this time, we're not going to be using the role. We're going to be using the policy instead. And it's going to be the admin. And if we go to the, actually, we're just gonna make a new page. We just changed the page, but I already called it a role page. So I'm just gonna call this the policy page.
page. And we do the exact same thing we did here in order to lock out uh, the policy page. Give it the attribute. And we named our policy admin policy, I believe. Right here. Yeah. This is the one you want to use admin policy. I'll keep that here. Yeah. So what's going to happen? Uh, did some. Oh yeah. Ugh. Honestly, it's easier to do this. Policy. Okay. Uh, I will let it run. We're gonna log in as that same person again as test two at test.com, whatever. I haven't done anything to him yet. He's still the same guy, he has the same role. He shouldn't have any claims. So it looks like I cannot access the, I cannot see this claim stuff here. Let's try accessing it uh, directly by adding this there instead, policy page. Yep. So even though I have an admin role, my policy is just called admin policy. It doesn't care. So I'm not authorized to go in there. Just to show you that there is a, a difference between the two. Speaking of. This page. Ooh, yes. I want it. Let's call it the policy admin page. Ooh, no, that was the wrong one. You know it's late. There you go. I'm going to change that to the policy page. So even if I did the, uh, so even if I had the policy, I still wouldn't be able to reach it because of the rule stuff. I messed up here, but that's okay. We have the claim now. And we're just going to make a new guy that will have both the role and claim of whatever. Oh, yes. I don't want to do that. S3, s.com. It will also be an admin. So we have a role of admin and a claim called admin as well that we added to this guy. Now let's log in. Same password. So yeah, we, we see this because he has the role of admin as well. But we're gonna do the policy of admin, and we could actually reach the policy page because now he has a claim of uh, of policy. So I went to the claims table here. We see we have one guy with a policy of admin, right? So here. Okay. So yeah, sorry about that. Um, so yeah, now we have test three. This guy has both a role and a policy and he can reach both places because of that, both admin places. However, 
Let's just say I wanted to be sneaky. I'm going to stop that. It's more for my curiosity. I just want to see if uh, doing that does anything. It should. Oh, it didn't. Interesting. So our user claim did not affect that. I changed the claim value to two. Oh, it's the claim type. Oh, okay. So there you go. Now we learned something. Watch this. Right, that's right. I log out. Log out because I haven't done any of the uh the timeout stuff. There we go. Ah, yeah. Okay. Now that makes sense. So when using the claims, actually reading off the name. When using the role, is reading off the ID or something. So there you go. So what I was doing there was just testing to see what I'm exactly reading off. So now you know as well that what it cares about is just the claim type, not really the uh, the claim value. But okay, that makes sense to me because our policy is only look for our, is only looking for the uh, only for is only looking for this the required claim of that of the claim type. Yeah, right there. String claim type. Oh, should have read that before. We'll save this a few minutes. But yeah, that's how you implement policies. This is how you implement policies here. And how you actually add them into the pages is through the authorized view policy or authorized view a component. And there you could add roles and policies. And on the page itself, um, let's see, where's that page? You have to add an attribute with authorized and either policy or roles with the name of it, whatever the name is. And then that is what it's actually going to get read. And that's how it's actually going to be implemented. And now you understand how to add claims to a user. Oh, you can understand how to add a user yourself, add a claim to the user, or and add a role uh, associated with that user as well. And that's how roles and policies work. I decided just to make this as an um, as an admin page because I believe that is the uh, the best way to contextualize all this. I'm sure I could have done this abstractly, but I think that wouldn't have been as good. And this reflects something a little bit closer to something that's real world. There's not a lot of bells and whistles here. And I didn't even grab the roles out of the database. I just created them uh, from scratch here. But ideally, what you would do is grab them from the database, put them in that list that we have up here. If you're going to make an admin page, add a login name or username, possibly a login name so you can separate the two and the password. And once they are created, you will probably have another process that will give them the roles and the claims that you need because what you usually want to do is separate the two. You don't want, you don't really want to add the user and then give them a role at the same time. Sometimes what you want to do is add the user first in some other process. And then once you're in your admin page, you could find the user exists and then give them a role or whatever. Normally the reason you do that is because there's more steps involved in creating a user. Like you have other things you want to give them like a profile and stuff. And then, you know, to authenticate them, through email, uh, make sure that they you know, do whatever process that your company might have, like emails, uh, confirm their emails and all that good stuff. But in this case, we just streamlined the whole process into one, uh, one submit 
that just takes in whatever the login name is. You add that person to the database with a role already assigned and give them a claims as well. That's associated with that role. But this is basically what you need to understand and know in order to use the identity, uh, ASP.NET uh, Identity API in your projects. Add that claim, add that role, create a user. You need to use the identity user object here. Um, and the rest of it is just Blazor stuff at this point. There's nothing else that's special to it except that you have to inject your managers here. So sign-in manager was used for our creation of the user and the user manager was uh, meant to add the roles and the claims to it. These are the stuff you could do with it, but obviously this is what we want. All these other things are just stuff that you need in order to make all of it work. Um, and this is just for me to have that alert pop out to make sure that I know that when something was submitted or not. Here's how you add a policy. You have to make sure you add a services for the ad authorization and you can add your policies there and you can make it work with a claim. And you can um, also add more logic and stuff in here, but I'm not gonna get too into that here. Just make sure that if you do wanna work with roles, you add this piece to the default identity before the entity framework stores. Make sure you add this or else your roles are not gonna work. It's kind of easy to look over. And then obviously make sure you have the use authentication, use authorization pieces right there. Also, please have all your services above the builder. You don't want to have it below or break the uh, the program. And that's about it. Now you understand how policies, roles, and claims work. And your claim is just, in case you don't know, your all your claim is, is just uh, two things. It's two, a pair of values, the claim type and the claim value. And yeah, you could add more stuff to it later on, or you could add more claims associated to a user. As you see in this table, I could actually give him another claim on top of it so that we could read his claims as we go to the policy. So I can make him an admin in an HR. So I go into both places, blah, 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 all that good stuff. If that's how you want to do it, this is how your users are looking like. And the default way of doing the IDs here is through a GUID. And then for the ASP.NET roles, there's like a table here that's in between the role table that gets all the roles and your users that it associates both the user to the role according to the ID. But at the end, they both read off the name. So in this case, the after you saw my little test of what, when I tried to manually change the claim, what mattered was the name. And I assume it's the same for the role. The ID only matters within the relationship of the table. And I think that is it. If I am incorrect about something here or I misunderstand, please let me know in the comments. I love seeing that, more engagement. And I like being corrected to make sure that I'm a better programmer as well. And I give good information. But in this little admin page, I believe we've gone through everything that we should be able to go through in order to get the point across. And, you know, pretty much to it. If you got anything else to add, let me know. Please like, subscribe. Let me know how you like it. And say whatever you want, got to say to me in the comments or my Discord, which I will be adding a uh, another or link to. So. Please join. We'd love to have you. And that's it. Again, for the fifth time that I've said it in this video. Bye.